Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for your Tuesday, April 21st, 2020. Please keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this is a reading that's dated for the 21st of April, that does not mean that it absolutely has to resonate for you at that time. Whenever you are guided to watch this reading and it resonates, then that's the message for you in this moment. Also keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Uh, please excuse me, I am getting an extremely late start today. Um, it is currently 9.30 in the morning where I am, and normally I have morning coffee posted by then, but I fell asleep super, super early last night, woke up at like one o'clock and didn't go back to sleep until like four or five, like actually it was close to five. And then next thing I know, it's 9 a.m. and I am just now getting out of bed. <laughs> so here we are. So I hope you guys had a good Monday, you know, especially considering that what even even is a Monday anymore, right? Right. Okay. Um, also, please uh, I keep in mind, I do have my window open because it is a gorgeous day here in Brooklyn. Um, it's sunny and there's a really nice breeze. The temperature is fantastic. So I wanted to leave my window open. If it gets too noisy, then I will close it. Okay. Alrighty, kids, let's just get straight into it for today. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Tuesday, April 21st, 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, I'm going to give this three shuffles. Let's see what we have for today. Morning coffee. Um, we're still in this purple energy, but there is a new energy. It's like a light, a very, very, very light blue. And it's a light sheen that's being, it's, it's like, okay, so what I'm seeing is I'm seeing this purple energy. And then I'm seeing like this veil of like light bluish. It could... Mm, no, it is. It has a blue tint to it that's just being drawn over you. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what that color means. Blue would be, could be, oh, oh let's try that again. Blue is, um, normally is attributed to like the throat chakra, at least for me, the throat chakra, communication. Um, and I guess I'm kind of getting a feeling that there's like some sort of veil of communication that's coming over you. It could very well be some sort of fortification, some sort of shield, some sort of defense energetically in order for you to communicate. There could be a need for you to communicate. You could have been afraid to communicate about something for some time. And now it's like this veil. Oh, spirit was just like, it's, a, it's like a veil of confidence that's allowing you to speak your truth or allowing you at least to feel safe to speak your truth. I really hope this is not for anyone that is in some sort of like, cause now I'm seeing, I'm seeing a, 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 an abusive situation, a family situation potentially, or just like an abusive home and an abusive, an abusive environment that Pete, someone is having to stay in a long, in a, for an extended amount of time, maybe because you live there. Um, and I really hope this is not for someone that's like, you know, in a really dangerous, destructive, d dangerously and destructively abusive situation. However, if it is for someone that is in that situation, I'm glad because it means that there is some sort of ability that's coming forward for you to express yourself or take action to save yourself, or at least take action to pull yourself out of that direct out of that environment okay so ooh, okay more power to you honey i'm praying for you the collective's praying for you we are on your side you have friends here <laughs> okay i will tell you that let's see what we've got let's see what we've got for today tuesday april 21st what is on the docket today spirit the lovers and the chariot okay so going for uh, what I, the first thing that I'm hearing, oh, we have more, is going forward with 
a choice that you've made and this very well feels like there's another card under this lover's card that i'm not sure if you guys can see that i'm going to look at it in a second but what are off the bat what this feels like here is someone has made a choice to better themselves someone has made a choice for themselves someone has chosen their wishes over someone else's wishes there, there there's something else under the lovers here the eight of swords okay ah and i was called to look at the bottom of the deck ego is at the bottom of the deck right now but this is the devil um so yes this was a situation i'm gonna pull more because i want to see i want to get a little bit more for this eight of swords but already look at look at all the, look at look at all this major arcana we have we have ego we have the chariot we have the lovers this could very well be a marriage this could be a twin flame relationship this could be a soulmate relationship this could be a family situation this could be a friend situation this also could be work this could be anything although i am getting a strong marriage vibe here Okay, but this is something that whatever it is you've chosen your way out of that you are gearing yourself up to even have the gears and ready to go moving forward with. It was destructive. It was toxic. Um, it was codependent. It was confining. All right. It felt like a prison. Let's get a little bit more here. We have this Eight of Winter, this Eight of Swords. I want to get a little bit more understanding of the Eight of Swords right now, and then we'll go deeper. Or whatever else you want to add to the to the scenario, please, Spirit. Oh, look at that. We go from the Eight of Swords to the Eight of Wands. Oh my God, talk about freedom. Talk about freedom. Okay. Three of Swords. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anything else, Spirit? Yes. Page of Swords. All right. Uh, someone's watching you. This is the person on the other side. Now, um, ooh, okay, and the lover and the devil is at the bottom of the deck again. Um, all right, check it out. Hold on, I want to look something up really quick because I just heard a word that I, I'm fairly familiar with. Um, and I just want to make sure that I understand the definition before I move forward. Oh my goodness. Okay, so um, here's the thing. Someone, I do feel like someone is watching you and I feel like it's someone that's on the other end of this equation. It could be someone that you're, wa you're walking away from, you're leaving behind, and it very well could be a fact that they have, they can't do anything but watch you leave or watch you move away from this circumstance or situation. Because what I heard when I was saying well, on top of what I, what I was saying, I heard altruistically and I looked that up and I, and it all, and the definition is unselfishly concerned for, or devoted to the welfare of others. Um, and so that makes sense because literally this person can't do anything but watch you leave. However, I feel like as they watch you leave, as they you know, deal with the heartbreak surrounding this. Not to say you haven't dealt with any heartbreak either. I'll get to that in a second. But as they're watching you move forward, they can't really do anything about it. And they're probably really starting to understand the value of the relationship that you two had between each other. And all they can do is just sit back and watch and pray for you, I guess, if you want to put it that way. Hope for the best. Um, it's like a level of concern is coming into play now that you're actually taking steps to move away, to walk away from the situation, now that you have actually freed yourself in some way, um, it could, it maybe, this could be a situation that maybe they're still, maybe you're still in some sort of vicinity to each other, or you're still part of each other's lives, or you still live with each other somehow. But ultimately, Okay, so that ultimately there's nothing that they can do but watch, but now there's a sense of care and compassion that's coming in because they're experiencing this three of swords, heartbreaking energy, which is something they may have never thought they were going to experience. Ego. This, okay, everything keeps bringing me back to ego because, or the devil. Um, you have, someone here has made a choice, okay? And they've chosen themselves over the codependency, over the attachment, over the... Uh, oh, confinement over the toxicity. 
You've made a choice for yourself. You've broken yourself out of jail. You went from the Eight of Swords to the Eight of Wands, okay? And now someone is watching you leave like, damn, I could have done better. Mm. All righty. Well, that's a little depressing. However, it does fall right in line with what I was seeing in the beginning of the reading where, you know, there's this purple color, this higher wisdom, this higher understanding, potentially seeing something from a higher point of view. And then there was just this light blue shield that came down. It wasn't like an additive energy. It wasn't like another chakra energy. It was literally just a, sh a thin, a thin veil of protection a shielding that's coming down over you. And I was seeing a blue color, so that could represent you speaking truth. It could, oh, Spirit just said honesty. It. I, I feel like you are standing in a strong sense of honesty, uh, good rapport, um, uh, maybe a little bit of righteousness, um, being on the right side of the story, being on the right side of history, I guess you could say. Ooh, whoa, yeah, being on the right side of history. And that could be the history between the two of you. It could be your life history. It could be your family history, as in like an ancestry. It could just be societal history. It could just be like, it doesn't matter. It could be, a, it could be your microcosm. It could be the macrocosm. But either way, there is some, there is something that has been going down here that was not ideal that at this point, we should have known, or at least the players in this game should have known that the way someone was being treated or the way someone was acting was not appropriate, was not good, was not right, was part of an old paradigm, some bullshit. It could very well be that you, in fact, knew that what was going on in your life was part of an old paradigm and you needed to pull yourself out of it. Well, here you go. <laughs> now, let me say, it's not like you, this person, or whomever is walking away from the situation, moving forward, moving on. It's not that you haven't felt any sort of heartbreak. I think, or it feels like you've been swimming in this sea of heartbreak for longer than this other person cares to let on to. Again, ego, the devil, okay? But at this point, you're so ready to go that the pain doesn't, it's not even, it, it doesn't even sting any longer. It's just like, it may still be there. You may still feel the heartbreak or, no, I'm sorry. You may still observe, you know, how the heartbreak is still in this situation, but it doesn't concern you any longer because ultimately you've made a decision to free yourself. Woof. All right. All right, all right, all right. So let's get into some clarification here. I'm being called to the Golden Universal Tarot right off the bat because I, I guess spirit, I'm hearing spirit wants to speak directly here. And I use this, I use this, this deck, not just to clarify, but to get specific messages and guidance straight from spirit. I'm wanting to start with the lovers. So we're going to start there. All right. So what do you have to say about the lover's spirit? I, I feel like whomever this is for is in need of some sort of reassurance, all right? So, whoa, guys, whoa. First card out is justice. <laughs> Holy shit, okay. With the, damn, with the queen of swords and the six of wands, dude, like, shh, and the ace of swords at the bottom of the deck. So look, look, if anyone here is trying to gaslight you and tell you you haven't made the right decision for yourself, I want you to direct them to this reading right here. Where are we? 14 minutes in. What was the spiritual consensus? What is the guidance from God, source, creator, or maybe even your higher self as to this decision that you've made? Justice, the Queen of Swords, the Six of Wands, and the Ace of Swords. Oh, and what's underneath the Ace of Swords? None other than that reciprocity card. The Six of Mah fucking Pentacles. All right, guys, you've made the right decision. Ego is in the way is what I'm hearing. Okay, so like, look. Okay, all right, all right, yes, because you do have the Six of Wands. Be careful, all right? Be careful. You have made a decision that is separating you or pulling you away from some sort, someone's strong egoic behavior or a situation that was set up by your own ego. All right. 
But now that you've made the decision to, to pull yourself out of it, don't slip back into that egoic energy and walk around here with a big head like you got it like that. When in reality, it's like, no, you just finally made the right decision for yourself. There's no reason to be in, 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 impetulant about it. There's no reason to be a childish about it. There's no reason to try and rub someone's nose in it. Especially if you're still living with the, the people or you're still in the circumstance, maybe just for the time being. All right, there's no reason to rub someone's nose in it. It's, it's, it is all too clear. It is all too clear that you, in fact, are on the right side of history here. Ace of Swords, Justice, Queen of Swords. All right, don't go rubbing people's noses in their own mess. That is not your job. <laughs> okay. All right, we have the chariot. Let's talk about the chariot here, please. Spirit, what can you say about the chariot? All right. That's enough. We're going to leave it there. What do we have here? More confirmation. We have the king of cups. This is emotional responsibility. This is definitely an energy where someone took their power back and was like, look, I recognize that something about this is not right. Whether other people be, are being treated like shit and I don't, and I'm not down with that, or I'm being treated like shit and I'm not down with that. The fact of the matter is that it is your responsibility to change what it is you do not like about your reality. Don't waste your time trying to change someone else because that's a fruitless endeavor. And even if they do make some sort of change, if it's not genuine, if they don't really want to do it, then honey, it ain't gonna stick. So at this point, it's like, I've gotta take matters into my own hands. If I don't like the situation that I'm in, then I've gotta do something about it. And so I'm going to. King of Cups, okay. Temperance, balance. There has been a lot of patience here. Um, I feel like you've been thinking about this a lot for a long time, and it may just have been the nature of the situation. Say you are married. It's not like you can just be like, snap of the finger, and be like, all right, I'm done here, bye. No, I mean, you could, don't get me wrong, you could, but that could be a snap decision that you're not necessarily, maybe that's not the right decision to make. So it wasn't like you already, it, it, mm, let me say it this way. It took some time. It took some time for you to get here, but that time was needed. We have the Knight of Pentacles in reverse, and we have the Fool in reverse. Um, I keep hearing stay upright. Okay, so, all right, all right, all right. So those came out in reverse here, but I think it's just, it's mainly because you're not quite ready to take action yet. I feel like with the Knight of Pentacles here, there's still some preparation that you need to take in order for you to take this leap of faith. So maybe you are getting a divorce. Maybe you are moving out of your house. Maybe you are moving out of your parents' house. Maybe you are leaving a job some sort of ego-based situation. And it's not like you can just snap your finger and poof, you're gone. No, there are practical aspects to this, but it's coming. All right, you have the Six of Cups at the bottom of the deck though. But all right, um, Six of Cups uh, could be a soulmate. I don't know. I don't really want to take that card. It doesn't really feel like it fits. I want to talk more about this. Let me talk more about this. The, the Fool and the Chariot in reverse, not the Chariot, the Fool and the Knight of Pentacles in reverse. And for that, I'm going to go back down to the more mundane deck here and i want to i want to channel this directly your your energies surrounding this directly and see what advice we can give you here okay so the fool and the knight of pentacles in reverse i feel like this is a planning energy okay 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 good so we have the uh, temperance here. Temperance is talking about patience. Yes, there are an, an alchemy. There, there is some time that's needed for things to come together, for you to make your move, for you to strike. One more shuffle, and let's see what we can, what advice we can get for you in terms of this. Okay, so the fool in reverse with the knight of pentacles in reverse. What can you tell us about this? Eight of Swords in reverse. Oh, and the Sun. Okay, that's good. That's good. The Emperor. Yep. Okay, for some of you, I, is that the Nine of Pentacles? Holy shit, it is the Nine of Pentacles. For some of you, you have to take in this time. Um, uh, <laughs> What I'm getting with the Eight of Swords in reverse, but coming out with the sun, I feel like some of you need to revel in this a little bit more. Some of you need to like settle into the fact that you have, first of all, that you have made the right decision for yourself. Second of all, just allow yourself to be happy for the fact that you came to this point of view where you're staring this in the face. 
the fool with the knight of pentacles you're staring moving forward in the pace in, in the pace in the face <laughs> in the face keep in mind guys that this clarification started with the chariot all right so um yes there is a level of planning that is involved here there are some things that need to happen but i think but the strongest thing that's coming through right now you have the eight of swords in reverse the emperor the sun and the nine of pentacles the emperor being the master of their own domain the executive the 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 leader ah okay there's a certain level of discipline here that's necessary and i couldn't quite understand what spirit was saying other than the fact that just enjoy the fact that you've made this choice for yourself that you're going in the right direction but you are needing to discipline yourself here so if that means little to no contact with these individuals that you're or the situation that you're moving away from little to no contact is necessary okay don't fall back on the old ways you've got to hold your stand your ground you've got to hold your own between the emperor and the nine of pentacles this is an energy of like complete i'll say it this way complete disregard of the outside opinion not to say that you're being mean or nasty about it not to say that you're coming out coming for people's throats when they're when if they speak their mind no okay a balanced emperor is a respectful emperor a balanced emperor is is yeah is fairly controlling but is also willing to hear out the the concerns and the and, and the opinions of people that they that they really care for that are their closest to but that doesn't mean they're going to change their mind again be respectful don't go rubbing someone's nose in anything six of wands okay but be respectful at the bottom of the deck you have the knight of cups all right let your heart lead you here follow your heart follow your intuition even if you have some friends around you that are in fact on your side and you know you guys are talking it through okay you want to talk about okay that's fine but don't allow them to sway you don't allow yourself to 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 hook into some sort of hive mind mentality stay independent stay a free thinker nine of pentacles all right okay next Next, what I want to look at, I want to look at the Three of Winter and the Princess of Winter, or in other words, the Three of Swords and the Page of Swords, but I actually want to break them apart. I want to look at them separately. So let's start with the Three of Winter, and I'm going back to the Golden Universal Tarot for this. Three of Winter, please, Spirit, what, can you, what do you want to say to us about this? A lot of reversals today. The Star in Reverse, the Three of Cups in Reverse, wow. Star in Reverse, the Three of Cups in Reverse, holy shit, holy shit. Holy shit. The tower, the empress, oh, and the lovers. <laughs> At the bottom of the deck is the four of cups. Look, 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 look. Someone done messed up and they know it. They know it. They sure as shit do. Because what we have here is the star in reverse with the three of cups in reverse with the nine of cups, right? Star in reverse is... um. Uh, Okay, specifically what I got when, the, when I saw the star and the three of cups in reverse, I got this feeling that someone thought that they could have their cake and eat it too. And then the nine of cups came out and it's like, yeah, your own selfishness, your own need for satisfaction is what's bringing this heartbreak about for you. Three of swords is what's changing the game here for you. And as a result, now we have the tower with the five of pentacles that something massive has changed. There's been a big, massive change in the situation and someone doesn't feel adequate enough. Now this could, and, and it, actually this kind of feels like after this tower moment struck, after, after the tower was struck, after something went down, after someone spoke their truth, someone decided to move on after this choice was made here, right? Someone chose themselves, someone chose unconditional love, someone chose... To honor themselves and to love themselves as they truly are and and to do what's right for them right but after someone made that choice that's when this five of pentacles energy came in and they and it's like someone is looking back on everything that they've done <clears throat> in the situation and now looking at the result of it and then thinking well how could i ever first of all i just heard how can i ever replace this person second of all because because what this person would the options to replace this empress here because i do feel like this is a person that's walking away or leaving the situation or deciding to move on 
Who could ever replace this person? The options that this that, that could replace that Empress are coming from the Three of Cups energy, the Hive Mind energy. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> because whomever is who is wrapped up or represented by this Three of Cups energy, they're nowhere near the level of this Empress. Oh shit, look at that, you guys. We have the Emperor and we have the Empress. Look at that. Okay, that's great. Excellent. All right. We could be dealing with divine counterparts here. All right, moving on. But now someone is like, well, how the hell am I ever going to be able to re to re to replace this person or to fix this situation? Five of Pentacles. And thus, we have an individual that looks like they have missed out on something, something real big, potentially. This I'm hearing this is a life-changing event for someone. Huge, major wake-up moment, wake-up call. But now all they can do is watch you, Page of Swords. All they, literally all they can do is watch from a distance and pray to God that something changes. There's a change of heart or something. Like pray that the God, Source, Creator, Universe steps in and fixes the situation somehow. Tell us about this Page of Swords, please, Spirit. So what's the deal with this Page of Swords? The devil, good God. The Hierophant with something else under beneath it. That's all, all right, with the Eight of Pentacles. Well, this is good because it feels like this was a kick in the pants for someone to start doing some work here. We have the devil, we have the Two of Swords and we have the Hierophant. Mm. All right, well, look, someone is being influenced to do some work here, to work on themselves. And it seems that it could very well be a situation where they were very much in denial in the past about what was super toxic about this situation. And that has everything to do with uh, indoctrination, her, the Hierophant, the same old way of doing things. Well, it, well, things have always been, I, I, things have always been this way. So this, mu this has to be okay. No, just because something has been in place for thousands upon thousands upon hundreds of thousands, maybe even millennia, thousands and thousands of years, that doesn't make it, doesn't necessarily make it right. Doesn't necessarily make it fair. Doesn't necessarily make it just. And someone was in denial about that. Two of swords. They did not want to see the toxicity. They did not want to face themselves. But now this Hierophant energy is also speaking to teaching and learning, which is like, now you're going to learn. Now you have no choice but to learn. And it's not even, and, and don't get a big head here. It's not even that it's anything special. I mean, yeah, okay, it could be, it could be special. We could be talking about a twin flame situation. But this was part of the plan. You, if you two have this dynamic between the two of you in which you both are going through some really extreme lessons with each other, then it's, then this is the person, what I'm trying to say is this couldn't just happen with anybody but it wasn't meant to just happen with anybody. Does that make sense? I want to go a little deeper here. I want to go back to my mundane tarot and I want to look a little bit deeper as to the, I guess the lesson that this person is learning or what, what potentially could be next. What does this mean? Let's talk about this. So this pile here on the page of swords, the devil, the hierophant and the two of swords here. What does this mean spirit? What is this leading to? Okay, five of wands. Yeah, ego battles. Oh, shoot. There's the king of cups again. Taking some sort of emotion. Oh, damn. With the lovers, the five of cups here, and the devil once again. Five of cups is at the bottom of the deck. <sighs> oh, look, the nine of swords just popped out. Hmm. Facing themselves. I guess this is forcing someone to grow up. Okay, you have the five of wands that came out first. Um, and then and then I want to say the devil came out after that. See, look, the devil is, is clarifying the devil here, you guys. We have the king of cups, though. So there is, a, there is an internal battle. There's an internal struggle. Please do not ask me about any sort of timing, because I don't know how long. Everybody is new, unique. We're all on our own separate paths okay but there is definitely an ego battle an inner struggle here between the devil and the king of cups between toxicity narcissism codependency and all that and emotional responsibility and maturity 
I mean, they are directly in, they are directly, directly opposing each other. But this is internal. So it's not like you're dealing with any sort of external influence per se anymore. If you are, or if this person is, they're dealing with the imprint that is left by this devil energy that they have taken on to believe that is themselves. And their heart is fighting against it. There's a sense of emotional responsibility that's fighting against it. Look, the page of cups with the lovers. Someone's getting some sort of change of heart. Someone is looking to make amends. Someone is looking to apologize. Someone is looking to start over. But then again, remember, here we have this energy of how the hell could I ever recreate this? How the hell could we ever start again? I mean, looking back at, from this person's point of view, that's watching, I guess, or that is on the wrong side of history. How could I ever... change the way I am or change who I am, be more than what I've shown myself to be so far. Okay. One last thing I want to look into here. I want to look into this uh, on the three of swords, um, coming down to the, the, the tower with the five of pentacles, specifically the tower with the five of pentacles is what I want to look at. Okay, so what is this tower with the Five of Pentacles? The tower with the Five of Pentacles, please, Spirit. Woo! <laughs> now you want to move? Now you want to come do take action? Ace of Swords. All right, the Ace of Swords with the Knight of Wands. <laughs> Someone's activated now. And the Wheel of Fortune. Well, good. You know what I'll say? I'll call this um, a, a successful mission. Because it got someone off their ass. Knight of Wands with the Ace of Swords. Now somebody wants to move. Now somebody wants to make a change. Now someone wants to grow up, glow up, and show up. Now someone wants to be better. And you know what? Don't hold that against them, because that's not fair. Ultimately, Mission accomplished. Whether y'all are going to come back together or not, mm, that's yet to be seen. I'm feeling adventurous, you guys. So let's go to the Ask Angels. Ask your questions. And we'll see what comes out. One last shuffle. I mean, honestly, I, maybe this is just m from my point of view, but it kind of feels like y'all don't even really care whether or not you go, you guys come back together. You, it's like it's like you're looking. It's like you're you're so far removed from this. You're so emotionally disconnected, or you're just so over it that you're looking back, like on the outside, looking in on this, being like, oh, oh, you've reached a change of heart. You've had a change of heart. Wow, good for you. I hope that serves you well. Because you're so focused on moving the, between the lovers and the chariot, man, you are so focused on moving on, on, on making a better life for yourself or having a better lo loving relationship for yourself, whatever this is, that you don't care about the fact that this person is activated and is now wanting to be better and do better. But I, I, don't hold any animosity for that. I mean, there might be a little bit of a twinge with your ego coming through like, oh, now you want to do this like the way I was before. But honestly, like, it's not even worth it to go down that rabbit hole. You know what I mean? But let's get your answers here. <sighs> Forgiveness. It's necessary. Even if only for yourself. Any more? Just one more. There it is. Okay, and within the next few no months. All right. So the thing, things could be... Yeah. Things could be changing within the next few months. Um, the answer to your question could be... The answer to your... Okay. All right, the answer could to your question could be maybe you'll be moving on. Maybe you'll be clear of this within the next few months. What is on the bottom of the deck, though, is a very emphatic no. 
And what I'm what I'm feeling is this is a no in terms of going back to the past, experiencing the same old, same old, getting back like some of you. OK, OK, I get it. Some of you asked, should I give this person another chance? Should I go back to this person? And the answer See, yes, the answer is no, not under the same circumstances. That's why it's an emphatic no. If something changes, if the situation gets better, if this person shows improvement, if this person shows remorse, if this person shows any sort of inkling uh, towards wanting to make change, and then you watch them follow through, yes. Then yes, then yes, then yes, then yes, then yes, you can give it another chance because that in, it's, in, in fact is a peaceful resolution and it is in fact in recovery and it is in fact improving health. But until any, and I mean any, of, of that comes into play, the answer is no. But forgiveness is necessary. Forgiveness for yourself, for being in the situation, forgiveness for other people, for the way they acted and the things that they did in the situation, forgiveness for yourself, for the way you acted in the situation. Everything is going to be very, very different within the next few months, guys. Okay? All right. Let us see here. Where is your Oracle guidance coming from? From Gaia, from the Gaia Oracle. Okie dokie. Okay, dokie, y'all. Whoops. All right, here we go. Closing Oracle guidance. Forgiveness is asking you guys to really try and not hold resentment here. Yes, easier said than done. Don't worry, I completely understand. I can very well be a king or queen, however you want to see me, of resentment, all right? I get it. You could probably hear the twinge of resentment in my voice right now, but <laughs> forgiveness is necessary. If only for yourself and your peace of mind, right? One last shuffle. All right. Here we go. Closing oracle guidance, please, spirit. Dar she blows. <laughs> okay. We have yin, we have yin yang. Um, don't mind me. That's my own personal thing. <laughs> but we have yin yang here. And those of you that are on a twin flame journey, you understand. Okay. 40. There is currently disharmony in some area of your life due to your refusal to accept certain aspects of your personality. Nothing, you ha nothing about you is bad. Every trait or quality you possess serves a worthwhile purpose. Moreover, any trait or quality that you think you lack, you actually have. Make a list of all the things that you don't like. Then think about how each of these things serves you and others in some way. Next, make a list of all the things you do like about yourself. It is natural to believe that your positive qualities undoubtedly serve both you and others. However, for every perceived positive, there is also a negative. Now think about the negative aspects of your perceived positives. This process takes a bit of time and requires an open heart and mind. It is definitely a worth, worthwhile exercise, for in the end, you will hopefully see that nothing is actually good or bad. Every aspect of you serves both you and others. Owning, accepting, and loving what is without wanting to change it will lead you to experience a happier, healthier, and more harmonious life. There is an affirmation here that I invite you to say with me if you feel so inclined. The affirmation says, I love and accept all that I am. There is nothing to change. There is only love. Every aspect of me serves both me and others in some way. I create health, wealth, and harmony. 
by loving what is. All I accept and love transforms to ever greater love. All right, guys. So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I hope you guys have a fan freaking tastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah. Take care. Bye.